Welcome to the City Council uh, meeting for January 7th, two, uh, January 9th, 2017. Please join me in saluting the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Thank you, Councilors, and Happy New Year. Uh, at this time, I would entertain nominations for Council President for 2017. Mr. President. Councilor Monahan. I'd like to nominate Robert Sullivan for Second. President in 2017. Motion made and seconded for Robert Sullivan for President in 2017. Mr. President. Councilor Beauregard. Yes, I entertain closing the, um, the nominations. Second. Motion made and seconded to close nominations. All those in favor? All those opposed? Nominations are closed. Mr. Clerk, would you please call <coughs> the roll? Azek. Robert Sullivan. Barnes. Robert Sullivan. Beauregard. Robert Sullivan. Cruz. Robert Sullivan. And Aerie. Robert Sullivan. Farwell. Robert Sullivan. Lally. Robert Sullivan. Monahan. Robert Sullivan. Rodriguez. Robert Sullivan. Studensky. Robert Sullivan. <laughs> Sullivan. Robert Sullivan. <laughs> 11 in the affirmative. So Robert Sullivan. Councilors, Robert Sullivan is unanimously elected new president. There you go. Well. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Um, Mr. Cruz, I want to, uh, I want to thank you. Um, on behalf of the City Council, uh, I, I can say that uh, Ward 1, uh, Council Timothy Cruz, who was the President of 2016, really served this Council and this body extremely well, great leadership, and really ran a great meeting. So, Tim, I want to thank you for all that you do for the thank City of Brockton. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, it's been a great group to work with. I really appreciate it. Uh, we had some new counselors. They all did a wonderful job. Uh, <coughs> and I know you'll behave well for Councilor Sullivan. <laughs> and uh, um, again, I'm very proud of the work we did the last year and I uh, hope to keep it up this year and move the city forward, not backwards. So thank you very much and good luck, Bob. Thank you. Thank you. Councilors, I do, I do just want to take a quick moment to, uh, to thank you for your support uh, and your vote. And uh, I, I have uh, served in this capacity in the past, and I just want to tell you that I'm going to continue to work with you and for you. We're going to have really some challenging times, I think, financially going forward this year. But as we did last year, um, this is a body that does it for the right reasons. We have great, great people on here. We're going to work together for the best interest of the people that we represent, which is the taxpayers, our constituents, the residents of this fine city. So thank you all, Councilors. Thank you. With that being said, we're going to go into, uh, Mr. Clerk, uh, agenda item number one, please. We have acceptance of the minutes of December 27, 2016, at City Council meetings. That is accepted and placed on file. Communication from the Treasurer Collector stating as of December 31, 2016, the balance of the stabilization fund is $5,926,745.62. <coughs> Bad to accept it and placed on file. Communication from the Chief of Police Department requesting that the $350,000 cut in overtime funds made to their fiscal 2017 budget be restored, be restored as a supplemental appropriation to the Police Department overtime account. Accepted and placed on file. Communication from the Mayor in accordance with Mass General Laws, Chapter 44, recommended that the City Council authorizes the appropriation of $150,000 from Stabilization Fund to Police Personal Services Overtime to provide additional funding by responding to the request of Chief Crowley for $350,000 in funding in his letter dated November 1, 2016 and December 30th, 2016. Accepted and placed on file. Communication from the CFO in accordance with Section 5 of Chapter 324 of the Acts of 1990, certifying the proposed appropriation of $150,000 from the Stabilization Fund to Police Personal Services Overtime will have no detrimental effect. Accepted and placed on file. We have... Mr. Clerk, uh, Mr. President, uh, seeing that items 6 through 10 are routine orders that we have to accept every year as a council, I'd make a motion that we uh, take them uh, collectively and act on them under the suspension Second. of rules Second. this Second. evening. Motion made, properly seconded, to take 6 through 10 collectively and act on the suspension of rules. All in favor? All opposed? Motion carries. Rules and regulations governing motor vehicles for hire under Chapter 159A for the carrying of passengers. 
an order of assessors to act as agents of the city council in matters of apportionment of betterments. Ordered that whenever any petition is filed with the city clerk on which a hearing before the city council is required, he shall cause notices to be given of such hearings to be held at the next convenient regular meeting of the city council. Order regulars, regulations governing the operation of hawkers and peddlers within the city of Brockton. Order pawnbrokers are to deliver a list of purchased pawned articles to the chief of police. Uh, so we're going to take a, uh, a final vote on these uh, six through ten. Uh, Mr. Clerk, if you could please read the roll. Azak? Yes. Barnes? Yes. Beauregard? Yes. Cruz? Yes. Henry? Yes. Farwell? Yes. Lally? Yes. Monaghan? <coughs> yes. Rodriguez? Yes. Sudensky? Yes. Sullivan? Yes. 11 in affirmative? Constance, that's adopted. Those agenda items 6 through 10 are adopted. Order that the mayor and our real estate custodian be authorized to accept on behalf of the city of Brockton a parcel of land consisting of 530 square feet, more or less, located at the corner of Main Street and Howard Avenue, owned by Cumberland Farms, Inc. of 1813 Main Street, Brockton. Said conveyance will correct an encroachment of the city sidewalk upon the property owned by Cumberland Farms, Incorporated. Constance, we're going to refer that uh, to real estate and also to finance and real estate Chair is Council Lodge uh, Rodriguez for 2017. So both referred to finance and real estate. Council Monahan. Uh, yes, Mr. President. I'd like to make a motion to act on number 12 under the suspension of the rules tonight. Second. Second. Motion made, properly seconded to take <coughs> uh, agenda item number 12 uh, and act on it uh, under suspension of the rules. All in favor, please raise your hand. All opposed. Motion carries. An appropriation of $150,000 from the Stabilization Fund to Police Personal Services Overtime to provide additional funding by responding to the request of Chief Crowley for $350,000 in funding in his letters dated November 1, 2016 and December 30, 2016. Council, there's no objections. We do have uh, our CFO, Mr. Conan, here. If anybody has any questions, I know Jay is ready, willing, and able to answer those. Uh, Council Farwell. Good evening, Mr. Condon. Good evening, Councilor. I, I really don't have a question on this. This is pretty straightforward. Uh, I, I do understand there's a pressing need for this, this funding. Uh, I will say that going forward this year, you have always been very gracious to come in and talk about financial issues. But as we get into more police overtime, which I'm sure is coming, uh, and I only speak for myself, not the rest of the Council, I, re I really do expect the department head to be here, not, not a captain or a lieutenant, but in, in my view, the department head should be familiar with the programmatic and operational aspects of the department, which drives overtime. And you certainly are eminently qualified to talk about the financial aspects of why we need it and where it's going to go. But uh, I, I guess I would ask you to carry back that message that I, and I feel that's true of all department heads. They, they need to know their personnel, they need to know their department, and as we get into probably a heavier request for an appropriation, I just would hope that, uh, that Chief Crowley would be here because I think there's a lot of things that, <clears throat> pardon me, need to be fleshed out as we, uh, as we go forward. So thank you very much. Thank you. Agree with all of us agree with that. Thank you, Council. <coughs> Council Cruz. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Condon. And actually, this might be for Captain Williams. Um, I also saw that we lost some state grant m yes. money. Um, is that money that we've had every year in, in grants? Yes, yes. We, we have uh, a, re a reduction of about a quarter of a million dollars uh, for the year coming up uh, compared to what we had last year. We got $100,000 for police staffing, and prior it was... Uh, 250,000 more, 350,000. So between the loss of that funding uh, and that grant will be coming before you as soon as we have it in final contract form so that you can uh, deliberate on it and hopefully accept it and ex approve it. But between that cut, the cut of the council uh, in the budget of another quarter of a million and the cut that the mayor made to the chief's request, it's about $600,000 less in funding in the fiscal 17 than we would have had in the prior year. So we are obviously, I think everybody would agree, we're going to need to do, do something about that. The request tonight is to just get us through to allow us to talk about the other items in a more deliberative fashion. But that's, uh, I think I'd make one more point. The, I believe that grant in prior years, going back several years now, maybe four or five years, was more like $600,000. I'll check on that for you. But it's a substantial reduction from the state over time in that staffing grant. And is that the Shannon grant, or what, what money is that? I believe that's the, that, that is not the Shannon grant. No, that's not Shannon. Yeah, that's just pretty much staffing grant for 
purposes of almost any use in the police department. And is that the governor, governor office cut that, or where, yes. where is yes. it? Yes, uh, we'd asked for more and we got less. And is there, do we feel like there's any chance of you hearing anything from the state that that may be restored, or? Not in the present budget environment, and I think the uh, the, the administration on, on Beacon Hill at the time is, is resistant to appropriating more if it means more tax increases, and so we're, we're, we're stuck, I think, with what we got. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Council. Council Bonds. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Is there any estimation about how much further this, um, I guess, new appropriation would bring the department in um, overtime? This 150? Mm-hmm. I think it'll, lot, take, right? it'll take you out until the middle of the month. Uh, if you get fortunate, maybe into the until the end of the month. So we'll be in front of you, not long from now, to discuss how you expect us and what you would like us to do to go forward. Because we're going to need cooperation on all sides. I understand the councils have questions with respect to how it's allocated, how it's spent, but we also have needs in order to keep the city safe. So th that discussion will have to take place. But for the moment, if this is appro approved tonight, because we are almost out in that account, if this is approved tonight, we'll be good probably until about the middle of February, I would think. Middle of February, you said? Yes. Okay. Um, and I'm not sure if this would be something for the captain. I, I'm not sure if we've asked for this before, but I can't remember seeing it. Um, how do we rank, I guess, in overtime spending f with other police departments of comparable size to here? <coughs> Um, is that some information we can maybe get? That's information we can obtain, I think, uh, but I don't have it off the top of my head. I will say that, and we've had discussions on this uh, subject as well, I think Brockton tends to appropriate and expend more for overtime than other like-sized communities, but we also have fewer working police officers. And so there's a trade-off that in my mind is what's the most effective way to put, because overtime puts officers on the street as does staffing. And the question is what's the most effective way, most efficient way to get those hours of staffing on the street or in the station, wherever you think you need it. Mm -hmm. And overtime I think is a very flexible way. There's obviously a limit to it um, because at some point the officers themselves aren't able to respond to the budget if you're asking them to do too much. But the cost of uh, pensions and benefits, um, absences, contractual absences for vacation and personal days, all add to the do mm -hmm. dollar salary so that it, in, I think, in, and also uh, health insurance costs for future years that you know you're going to have to pay these guys uh, when they finally retire. So I think there's a pretty strong case to be made that within the practicality of getting the assignments filled, you're better off with overtime than you are with staffing until you reach a limit where it's no longer effective. And that's, that's a topic for legitimate discussion. Uh, we have attempted over the last few years to add staff mm -hmm. as well as net, as well as replace retiring officers. Mm -hmm. But that's a, that's a point of discussion we should, we should have. I'll try to show you some math why I think overtime is more expensive. See, overtime doesn't take a day off doesn't take a sick day. It's just, it's totally fungible dollars that can be used as needed, where needed, when needed. Whereas if you hire somebody, you're thinking you're hiring a police officer, but you're only getting that officer for the number of work days and the number of work hours in a year, less is uh, obliged time off. Mm -hmm. That's not as flexible as the overtime hour, <laughs> even though it's more expensive than straight salary. Okay. That, that's my argument. Okay, but if, if we can maybe get that, just a graph or some kind of chart yeah. or something. Um, yeah, I think that would be helpful. Yeah, and I guess coming from last year to this year, um, just to kind of see how other towns are spending theirs. Yeah, and we've also had what some- What rate? We had, we've had challenges in getting staffing filled as well. Uh, the, mm -hmm. the city has an objective of adding to the number of officers who are from the minority community for purposes of dealing with the population they deal with today. Mm -hmm. And there are some restrictions as to how we can pull off a minority list. And, you know, we've got some issues to resolve with the uh, Department of Human Resources at the state level on that. So just simply saying let's hire more police officers isn't always the easiest answer. Mm -hmm. It takes a while and it's not always what you're looking for in terms of the staffing structure. But it's worth the conversation. Well, in that same vein, so um, the next civil service exam is April, right? Um, it's, it's coming up. I'm not sure of that. Oh, okay, I, I think I've seen some um, advertising. It's like April or May or something like that. They've been um, advertising for <coughs> folks to uh, at least apply or, or try, uh, try to take the test. Is there, any, or is there any anticipation for Brockton to get any more um, academy slots after that is that how does that work how, how would we kind of get well, in we line appro we appropriate the money uh, in order to be able to fill uh, staff and put them through the academy there's mm -hmm. money in this year's budget I think for 10 that sound about right uh, 
eight unfilled. So that that's money to be available uh, and to be used. And I don't think we'll see anybody in an academy until the spring. Is that fair? Okay, so they'll be on the street soon. Okay. Okay, great. Thank you, Mr. Um, Condon. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Councilor. Councilor Yanieri. Thank you, uh, Mr. President. Good evening, uh, Mr. Councilor. Condon. How are you? Good. Just um, just a couple of quick comments, and uh, and I agree with um, even what Councilor Fowle said. I mean, this is something that's straightforward. Um, I mean, it's a, it's a no-brainer to what we have to be doing because the one thing we don't want to do is make sure that account totally runs out because by doing that, then we're going to lose... Uh, some of the things that, that we need definitely out on the, the street. But in the same token, I know when we discussed it, you know, it's fullest when we were doing the budget and we did reduce the account. Um, even at that point, um, we knew possibly the mayor would make some reductions to some programs, which, which he did. And I think, um, you know, the one thing that, that concerns me, um, and, and I'll have a further, you know, conversation when we, when we have you before us uh, again in the next few weeks, is, is the fact that, you know, some of those things that um, we did lose out of is a lot of the patrols in some areas. And, you know, I hear it every day of, of the different patrols that I lost just in the Campello section, which bothers the business people and even some of the residents that are within. So, you know, those are things that I'm going to be looking for as we talk about that next round of, you know, monies in the next few weeks, that if we're going to be able to, or if we put that money back in um, the next 200000 that the things that I want to see some of those things back out on the street as well. I think that's what's most most important. But we're going to have that, we'll have that discussion, um, you know, when that time comes. But I, I support what's before me tonight. I told the mayor that when I met with him just last week, um, that I have no problem with it. Um, again, the one thing we don't want is a loss because we can't, we can't jeopardize some of the other things that happen in other parts of this country. You know, we've been fortunate. We really have been as an urban city, and, and I want us to continue that way because we've got, we've got a good group of men and women that are working in that department and keeping us safe every day. So uh, my full support with that tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Mr. Thank President. You. Thank you, Councilor. Councilor, any other questions for Mr. Condon? Motion's going to come before us now on a final vote with a roll call vote. Mr. Clerk. Oh, Madam Clerk, if you could please read the roll. <laughs> Azak? Yes. Barnes? Yes. Beauregard? Yes. Bruce? Yes. Aneri? Yes. Farwell? Yes. Molly? Yes. Monaghan? Yes. Rodriguez? Yes. Studensky? Yes. Sullivan? Yes. 11 in affirmative. Council's appropriation is adopted. Mr. President? <laughs> I move reconsideration in the hope that it doesn't second. prevail. Second. Motion for reconsideration hopes it doesn't prevail. It was properly second. All in favor of reconsideration, please raise your hand. All opposed? Motion for reconsideration does not prevail. Councilors, that's you, the Councilors. last agenda item, but what I am going to do uh, is have uh, Mr. Zioli, our city clerk, read out the uh, committee assignments for the year 2017. Brockton City Council Committees 2017, Finance Committee, all city councilors. Account Committee, Dennis Ianeri, Chair, Shirley A. Zach, Ann Beauregard, Winthrop Fowle, John Lally. Beautification Committee, Shirley A. Zach. Community Schools, Shana Barnes. Ordinance Committee, Timothy Cruz, Chair, Dennis Ianeri, Winthrop Fowle, Paul Studinsky, Thomas Monahan. Public Safety Committee, Winthrop Fowle, Chair, Timothy Cruz, Lucy Rodriguez, Paul Studinsky, Thomas Monahan. Real Estate Committee, Lucy Rodriguez, Chair, Shana Barnes, Ann Beauregard, John Lally, Shirley Azak. Traffic Committee, Shirley Azak, Ann Beauregard. Councilors, that is the official assignments for 2017. Uh, again, Councilors, because Monday is the Martin Luther King holiday, we'll be meeting Tuesday here at 7 o'clock, which is the 17th, next Tuesday, 7 o'clock for finance. I also do just want to, uh, on behalf of the City Council, commend uh, Fire Chief uh, Mike Williams and the Fire Department uh, who received the, uh, the highest insurance rating possible. Uh, they went up from uh, a class two to a class one, and that's a big thing. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and there's only five in the Commonwealth that have that uh, attainment, okay. uh, and there's only 204 nationwide with that designation. So I want to thank the chief, and I want to thank the men and women of the fire department. With that being said, anything else, Councilor? Mm -hmm. Councilor Farwell. It's just a moment of personal privilege. Absolutely, Councilor. Just an announcement. There will be a tax abatement workshop, which was put together by Councilor Beauregard and Councilor Azak. I kind of tagged along, and it's kind of a continuation of apparently what Councilor Monaghan has done for five years. Tax abatement workshop so people can learn about do they qualify for an abatement, do they feel their property is overvalued. It's this Saturday, the 14th of January, at the main branch of the public library from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. So this Saturday, 
main branch of the library, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m., and I thank everyone who worked on that. Thank you, Councilor. Councilor Neary. Thank you, Mr. President. Moment of personal privilege, Absolutely. if I might. Just to uh, remind the members of the uh, uh, Accounts Committee that we will be having a meeting on Tuesday evening. It will be January 17th at 6 o'clock p.m. right in the uh, GAR room. That's, again, Tuesday evening, 6 o'clock p.m., and we'll uh, conclude about uh, 6.45 uh, p.m. The second thing I'd just like to mention, if I might, Mr. President, I, I, I do want to commend uh, all of our staff um, for a job well done this weekend in our first uh, major snowstorm. And I, I think it, uh, it, it definitely was uh, taken to note that they were out there working hard, feverishly. Uh, police, fire, um, DPW, all those involved. I don't want to get into mentioning uh, names because then you, you, you mistake uh, some and, and I don't want to forget some. But I, I just think it's, it's, a, it's great that we have a great group of people that are vetted and ready to work, um, you know, at that type of a, uh, when that type of a storm comes. So I appreciate it and I know the city does as well. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor. Councilor Lally. Moment of personal privilege. Absolutely. Um, I just wanted to, uh, to wish my, my sister Maeve a very happy uh, 18th birthday Dang. and uh, congratulate my ward's uh, newest constituent. <laughs> <laughs> Council, is anything else before us this evening? If not, we are hereby adjourned.